Zoe? Is this an emergency? I didn't hear the phone. No. Just making an early start on calls. Haven't got time for a coffee. I've had one. Please, Zoe. I don't want to go to work without talking to you. I think you said everything you wanted to say last night. What are you doing? Saving us from being ripped off anymore. When a gang of kids come in here, I can't watch them all. So you've made me think they're nicking? Yes, actually. Well, some of them are my friends. And maybe they don't steal, but I can't differentiate between your friends and bad kids. So I can't walk free with two mates? <sighs> don't be ridiculous. Look, I can't run this place properly when your dad's gone God knows where. If you really cared about him, you'd find out where he was. Well, I went to the police, didn't I? What more can I do? Well, Dad went looking for Kelly when she went off with Tom. But I can't leave you two. And anyway, all he did was waste a load of time, leaving me here, looking after you two and running the shop on my own. And have you ever thought why he keeps going away? Because the alternative's staying here with you. Yes, yeah, but, but I, I don't know whereabouts in Amsterdam, or, or even if he's still in Amsterdam. Uh, yes. Yes, I see. Right, bedankt. Dank. Oh, Dutch for thank you. Terry's little escapade has proved educational in more ways than one. Are you fluent? Well, no, no, bedankt is it, but having heard the Dutch, I'm not surprised they all speak English. <laughs> oh, there's no trace of Vic and Terry. Well, last night, I was very grateful he wasn't here. Mm. I've got to go. At work? No, the flat. Now the sale's going through, I've got to get rid of the furniture. The big question is, how much do I need to keep until I leave? Well, as a VAT inspector, I thought you'd known that. Uh, and what do you normally leave non-payers? A chair, a table, a bed? I haven't a clue. That's the bailiffs. Just as long as I get a pound of flesh. Yeah, but why not sell it all at once? Why do it in dribs and drabs? What, and sleep on the floor? Well, I've got a spare room here. You're very welcome to move in until you're ready to go. Are you serious? Um, well, well, I'm sorry. I no. No, Alan, that would be wonderful. The flat already seems, well, different to being here. <laughs> ah, glad you could make it, Chris. You thought I wouldn't? I just thought we could at least be polite. I know it's difficult for you. I've seen how you eat. Kim, today there's not a thing you can say to upset me. I guarantee that. You'll forgive me for trying, though. Absolutely. Oh, just put it down there. Thanks, John. You don't want me to pour? I'll be mother. Thank you. I should have thought to bring a bottle of champagne to celebrate our little deal. I'm so glad you didn't. Mmm! Mmm, they're really, really good. Well, what are you wearing? Oh. You like it? Sir. Don't you have to be qualified or something to wear that? Oh, you've tasted my profiteroles. Is that qualified or what? Mm -hmm. Oh, Betty, you shouldn't have. What are these? There's a note. Get off! I'm not having anything in my mouth that you've been messing with. Your dog's standing you up, then. The note wasn't sealed, was it, Betty? I didn't have to read the note, is a man. They all think they can buy the way out of trouble. <laughs> if my Seth turns up with a pair of pig's trotters, I know there's going to be words before Coco. She's speaking in cord. Oh, hey. Yeah, check this out. Have a bite. Have you diced the carrots? I'm getting round to it. Go on, have a look. Marlon, you're employed to... What's that ridiculous outfit for? Chef's wear him. I thought I could... Don't think. Chop. £350,000. And now, in return for this, you don't accuse me of embezzlement ever again. This letter states that the shortfall was due to a clerical error I spotted in the accounting. Puts you in the clear. When I get the banker's draft, I sign the letter. You know, Chris, I always knew that one day you'd find something in this life that you were good at. Never thought it'd be blackmail. You left yourself open to it. But I always knew one day you'd do that. How can I be sure that when I hand this over, 
You'll stop blackmailing me. You have my word. Shall I sign this letter? Thank you so much. <laughs> took her by surprise. I know where me and Biff... That's just it, though, isn't it? For you and Biff, having a baby would be normal. She'll come round, Zoe. No. Whatever doubt she might have had about her sexuality, I think this has made us both realise that it's wrong. But sooner or later... If she gets used to the idea. No, Linda. There comes a point where you just know it's not worth going on. I don't think I can take any more. Emma, Susie, Dad, all this business with Kim. Is it so wrong that I want someone of my own to love? Well, do you mean Sophie or a baby? I don't know. I don't know anything anymore. All right, you can wear the outfit, but don't expect me to pay for them. No, you know where you're going. I don't see why you can't draw me a map. Because it's an illegal warehouse. I mean, what if you had an accident or something? Police would find it. Look, all you have to do is write Grandma's house, anything. By the way, it's dog. Dog? Luke's fierce. Tongue like rash to bacon. Dead term. Like his tummy tickled. Where's he going? All sailors. Uh, listen, about tonight's vodka promotion, I've been thinking, Nigel Ebert's got a great recipe for borscht. Russian. The vodka's Polish. Blinis, then. Little pancakes, thin. Oh, delicious. And Russian. Madam, I'll do the cooking. You clean the pans. Should be flipping nights. Yeah. Hey, love. Not used for half an hour either. It goes on and on. Well, if you find out what it is that keeps them going, bottle it. If I find out what keeps them going, I'm certainly not telling our Jan. <laughs> Two pints, please, Alan. Cheers, Al. Something I heard from Terry and Bickman. No. <laughs> Maybe they've been kidnapped. Hi. Hi. We called earlier. I was out. Anywhere interesting? Not really. I've got to pop out soon. Again? Yeah, I forgot Joseph's medicine. Oh, I didn't know he was ill. He's a bit croupy. I don't like it when he gets a cough on oh. his chest. <laughs> oh, I was uh, hoping you'd come to the farm for tea. Andy's coming over with his dad. Oh. Well, we'd just be in the way, wouldn't we? No, no, I could use a bit of moral support. I, I find it really difficult with Billy. Well, Sarah, you know that I would, but I'm really busy. I've got to prepare for an interview tomorrow. At the school? Yeah. OK, another time. Sure. I mean it, you know. We really miss you at the farm, especially Jack. <laughs> we'll fix something up. OK. Come on, Victoria. Bye. Bye. You know, Biff, old chum, today I picked up a cheque for more money than you could earn in a lifetime as a farm labourer. So what are you telling me for? Pleasure. You can go. Chum. Hi. Kelly, we need to have a little chat. What about? The fact that you were overpaid £200 last month. Don't tell me you don't know anything about it. I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, I think you do. Would you like to sit down? You were trying to tell me your wage packet was up 200 pounds and you didn't even notice. I thought it must be tax or something. <sighs> Do me a favour. Now, you listen, little girl. That £200 was a fiddle. You know it, and I know it. 
All I need to know is how, because if you can do it, so can somebody with brains. I've done nothing. Who can get in that computer? That's who you ought to be bullying, not me. Nobody. That's the point. There's me, there's Kim, and neither of us are giving you £200 for nothing. Well, if nobody can get in, what makes you think I... This wasn't Kim's doing, was it? You're not doing any favours, anything special for her that I don't know about? No. Well, in that case, you've swindled me out of £200. I told you. And I'm telling you, I know you did it. I didn't. When I can prove it, you're sacked. The gloves, do you? Sorry? Do that again, you'll have no fingers. <laughs> Probably no answers, welcome to that. Uh, uh, my contact said it was a. said it was a pussycat. Suit yourself. Hello, yeah, no, wait! wait, wait. Uh, I've come to do uh, a bit of business. No, with me, mate. This is the. Uh, this is the warehouse. Who says? Uh, Marlon. <clears throat> Marlon Dingle. Dingle? So? Yes. <laughs> yes, that's the chap. Uh, said he'd, uh, said you sold me out a spot of booze. Uh, cheap. Um, very cheap. And a friend of the Dingles? Anyone who's a friend of theirs is... Huh? Well... Can you give me a hand? Hang on. Caribbean or Far East? Sorry? Oh, come on, quickly. Oh, Linda. If you don't choose, I will. Is this a game? Well, to be more specific, Jamaica or Thailand? I'm going to have to set this doggy on if you don't start making sense. They've got the most ridiculous offers on both. A holiday? Right! So, which one? Well, I'm surprised you haven't chosen for me. Actually, I've asked them to hold Jamaica because I've got this all-inclusive hotel. Oh, you're serious? Yes, very. You fly from Heathrow tomorrow. No, I couldn't possibly. I can't just leave this place. So we to ring up and cancel Paddy then? No, Linda. Oh, this is ridiculous. I've got to let them know. Come on, help me with this dog. <sighs> I've told you, two only. Donna, you come in now. No, this is stupid. Come on, love, we're next. You wait your turn, Andy Hopwood. This is our turn. Well, you'll just have to wait. Oh, here, yeah, Mrs. They've been waiting ages, eh? Well, then they won't mind waiting a little bit longer. We'll be late for tea. Oh, Dad. Andy, you know. Know what? Come on, love. What's going on? The wicked witch they let two of us in at a time. But you needn't think I'm being a bouncer. I've had enough grief today. Will, I need to talk to you. Look, if you can have another go at me, now isn't the best time. It's not a good time for me either. Chris Tate's found out about the money. So? What do you mean, so? He's threatening to sack me. All sorts. Yeah, threaten you. That's all he can do. He's got no proof. He doesn't need proof. He knows. Look, Kelly, this isn't the most important thing going on in my life at this moment. Well, it is mine, and it's down to you. Yeah, you're right. I'm sorry. So? What do I do? Well, I get you into this mess and you still want my advice? Well, I can't talk to anyone else about it. Right, just keep quiet. Play dumb. You'll be fine. Trust me. <laughs> uh, cash? <laughs> Thought so. Well, Mr. Longman. Call me Jeff. Ernie. Uh, uh, Eric. Right, <laughs> Eric. <laughs> Couldn't be more delighted to do business with you. And me, you. I mean, not everybody appreciates that this vodka has come all the way from Siberia. Especially chilled in genuine Siberian ice. It's funny, I've always been under the impression that vodka had no real taste. Uh, other than the stuff flavoured mm. with fruit, of course. <laughs> <laughs> but this stuff of yours, quite remarkable. <laughs> and the price. <laughs> it should have been two quid a bottle more. To anyone else, anyone who wasn't a friend of Marvin's. <laughs> uh, you mean uh, Marlon? <laughs> <laughs> Names. Don't be the death of me. <laughs> You know, they say you can't avoid two things in this life. Death and taxes. And you're doing very well on the tax front, aren't you, Jimmy? <laughs>
It's Jeff. Hi. Hi. <laughs> well. <laughs> now then, Billy, how's it going? Yeah, great. Yeah. Yeah, would you like tea, coffee, something stronger? Beer? Right. Hey, how's school? All right. You haven't been fighting, have you? No. He hasn't. I'd have told you. Hey, it's no tea. Uh, he caught it on the car. He didn't come in the car, did you? No, it's... Uh, well, it needs a new exhaust, so it's back on the bus for a few days. <laughs> Robert's got a spare pullover. Go and find it, Robert. Yeah, cool. Yeah? How's work? Well, you know. Right, stick it down there. Come on, come on, quickly. I'm quickly in it, This is as quickly as I get. There you are. Oh, where am I supposed to... Don't tempt me, I haven't got time. New vodka, old bottles. Nobody knows, not the expensive stuff. Well, by nobody, I suppose you mean... Di ex Eric, I thought I'd make some kebabs for tonight's promotion. Oh, I told you. Bellinis. What are you doing? Are um, we, um... Uh, oh, uh, Eric was just saying how he was going to pay for me outfit. Yeah, uh, yes, well, he has shown willing. I thought I ought to reflect that. Fair enough. Uh, but if you can buy him a new outfit, I think you can buy me one too. Harrogate, tomorrow? Here you go. Want some more? How's Tupping? Hmm? Tupping. Okay, great, yeah. I heard Dutton was cutting back on his flock this year. Well, well, like I say, he's the farmer, I'm just the farm labourer. You helping at all, Andy? No, he's, uh, he's a towny at heart, really. If you ask me, he's frightened the sheep. Well, he's always keen to help me. Hey, Andy? Yeah. I'm not frightened the sheep, you know. How's the cottage? Must be great having your own room without Robert. We're doing right well, me and him. Regular pair of heroes. Isn't that right, eh? All right, is that the time? We best be off. I'll run you back. No. Uh, there's no need. There's no bother. No, it's all right. You've done enough. Uh, we best get off, Andy. Last bus in ten minutes. Oh, yeah. Redanked. Mandy says she and Biff are coping. It's all quiet. A bit of vodka promotion at the wine bar. Here. You look like you could do with this. Eric Pollard can go to the Philippines and come back with a beautiful bride. Vic and Terry can only cross the channel and make other fools of themselves. Well, there is one good thing. It gives us more time on our own. No, but we're stuck here. We could be going somewhere. Where? Oh, I don't know. Dinner, cinema, or anywhere. I don't want to be anywhere else. In fact, seeing as Mandy and Biff are coping, there's no reason why we even need to be down here. You do know how to make an old man very happy. You're not old. No, but I am very happy. <laughs> Did you manage to say out to Biff today? I thought you was going to have a word with our Linda. No, you didn't. We agreed. And listen, what am I supposed to say? You know, I'm glad my only daughter's good in bed, but uh, can you keep the noise down, please? Shush, we don't want the whole village to know. Jan, the noise them two make, I'm surprised the whole village don't know already. There you go, large one for price of singles. That's my boy. Hey, Roy, I hope you're not drinking. Uh, no, it's orange juice, Mum. Honest. Got a few of these down me, at least I'll get a good night's sleep, whatever. What's going on today? About what? Andy and Billy. Something's wrong, Jack. Yeah, I noticed. Don't know what it is, though. Maybe Billy's finding it all a bit much. I mean, you know of all people how hard farm labourers work. Yeah, but Andy's pretty self sufficient. I would have thought it more likely he's looking after Billy rather than the other way around. I'm going to go over there tomorrow. See if Billy will say anything without Andy being there. Well, you know what I'd say if I was in his shoes, Sarah? It's none of your business. Yeah, I know. But we'd have never got Andy out of a children's home in the first place if we minded our own business. What do you think of the Bloody Marys, eh? Oh, it's right nice. Can I next one we have to tomato juice? <laughs> it's going really well, Eric. Mm. Mm. What did you expect? 
Ah, uh, can I interest you in a Bloody Mary? Eric, you couldn't interest me in a leather waistcoat and see-through shorts. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's sufficed. Rachel? No, thanks. Got to keep a clear head. Job interview tomorrow. Ah. Oh. Jan, another one? Oh, no, no, no. No, Ned? Who need you ask? <laughs> so you still haven't told me what all this is in aid of? Do I need an excuse to buy a beautiful wine champagne? Yeah. Yeah, you do, and it's your ex-wife. Let's just say um, I settled an old score today. You got one over on Kim Tay? How'd you guess? <laughs> so, tell me about it. It's probably best you don't know, other than... Uh... Yeah. Joseph? No, well, well, you can buy him something with it if you want. I just thought you could probably do with five grand. Chris, why? Nobody else to share my good fortune with. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, yeah, in 15 minutes. Oh, sorry, I'm late. Kim was out. She's only just come back. What's going on? Holiday. Zoe, I can't... Just you. I need time, like you did. If this is about last night... It's about a lot more than just last night. Well, where are you going? Jamaica. And for how long? Zoe, please, you're being silly. Oh, I don't think so. I'm catching the 7 o'clock from Lee's Bradford to Heathrow in the morning, so... I'm going down to a hotel tonight. What about me? Well, you're welcome to stay here. It's entirely up to you. I thought I was making you happy. I thought you were making me cocoa. No, you're right, you are. That's the trouble. Soon you'll be gone. I'll be back. Will you? You said that when you get to America, if you like what you see, you might stay there. Well, that was before all this. Before Coco with an ageing, overweight country pub landlord, compared to riding into the sunset over the Grand Canyon on a motorbike. I know which I prefer. I'm biased. We'll just have to wait and see. There's another option. Alan, please don't ask me not to go. I just might not, and both of us might live to regret it. Now, that's one option, but it's not the one I had in mind. Joe, you coming into my life has changed everything. Before, I was quite happy just to drift into the long good night, but, but now I'm, I've had enough of just sitting back and waiting to die. Alan, don't be so melodramatic. No, no, no I'm serious. Joe, if you'll have me, I'll sell the pub and come with you. Well, I, I've always wanted to see how the Grand Canyon compared to Holton. Yes. 